Hi, I'm Mike Turner, Senior Industrial Designer with DG Design, and welcome back to episode three of our series looking at race car sketch modelling. Uh, in this final episode in the series, we're going to be uh, looking at adding in details and progressing the design through to final render stage. Um, I'm very much in mid-flow with my commentary, so um, let's just jump straight back in and take it from there. Thank you. And then here we're into under tray development. You know, there's a sort of a chassis surface that's going to link the front to the rear underneath the vehicle. So it's again get a very basic curve network up and running for that that defines the shape. Uh, can be a simple planar surface and then use draft to sort of thicken up the edges. Start to give us what we want. Give us something so it looks like you know the bodywork is now planted down onto something. Uh, a lot of this will get lost in shadow in the final renders. You won't really see a great deal of what goes on under there, but certainly yeah, there's some lower sort of chassis plate linking the front to the back of the vehicle now. Uh, so it looks a bit more, bit more like it. It's, it's coming together. And then with this next job, we're using um, basic draft tool to start to create the sort of cockpit pod, if you like, the bit around the driver. Um, which again will be well inboard. You see a lot of sort of space in this chassis underneath as you sort of pan around it, but there's a central hint of a cockpit tub. Again, I'm not worried about making beautiful surfaces. These are never going to get used for anything other than basic visualization, things that are lost in shadow. So it can be very simple drafts, but it's just enough to, to hint at the bodywork that's in there. And then the next job for me is to look a little bit more at the, uh, the windscreen graphic and to perhaps think about using tubular offset to define regions where there's obscuration on the glass and regions that will be purely clear. Because there's always a perimeter bound that's usually solid. So it's a case of drawing some curves onto the model to represent that. Uh, and then using the project tool to project those on. Uh, and use fillet tool to sort of start trimming things back. Extending things through where curves don't yet exist, you can put extra ones in and play around with the CV character of it. But we're after getting to the point where we're, you know, we're hinting at, at what it might look like in production. Now, for sure, this is not production data by any stretch of the imagination. We're not, we're not really implying that. But the more of these visual cues you can work into the design, the more realistic, in inverted commas, you know, the design will look. So, at the minute, we're defining the region that's obscuration and the region that's just going to be glass. And even though the glass will have a very heavy tint on it in in my final renders you will see that difference between the two. You know, we're not, we're not out to show a full interior on this. We're just doing enough to hint at the design to give us a flavor for what that design might look like. So it's a case, a case of continuing with your very basic draft surfaces, uh, very basic offsets, tubular offsets to just give us those profiles we want, give us the character that we want as far as what the cockpit region might be. And we're getting to the point now in this where, yeah, it's all kind of coming together. It's all sort of doing what we want it to do. When you drop a person in there, it's starting to look convincing. Maybe you want to hint at a seat. And again, this isn't a detailed seat study by any stretch of the imagination, but it's just enough surfaces in there that if you've got the car parked up and you can start to see into the cockpit, you're, you're hinting at a few surfaces that will represent sort of a racing bucket seat. Uh, and give a flavour for that. So it's it's just a series of very very basic skins, a few basic fillets and chamfers, uh, and again, you know, we, we're going to revolve a, a very basic surface using the construction plane to to hint at what a steering wheel might be, and we can get that positioned true to where it would be in in real life, very much sort of down in his lap between his knees, um, not really obstructing the line of sight, uh, but it's just yeah, again, giving another extra level of detail. Using very basic draft tools to hint at a sort of a horizontal surface that will form the basis of the dashboard, uh, lofting a few basic curves and um, yeah, just railing them to, and playing around with the CV relationship to hint at what could be an instrument pod. We're not going to detail that up. We're never really going to show it in a render, but you might pick up on it as sort of looking through the windscreen and there'll be enough detail in there that will just get, yeah, okay. Yeah, it looks a bit more like a, a finished design or certainly a, a more mature design. So it's, it's all very basic stuff. With this last little bit of modelling work that I'm doing here on the cockpit, I realise I want, I want the cockpit to sort of duck inside that, that rear sort of sloping wing section. So I need to sort of extend things through a little bit more to create a bit of land there from our original cockpit surface that's tucking inside, that's going away into the design and then just shuttering that off 
Again, we're not making pretty surfaces, we're just doing very basic drafts to just close things out so you can't see through the model, which again will help it look a bit more convincing. So now to me it feels like the design's yeah, really quite getting there, but I'm still still not sure about these headlights. Still quite happy to explore the variants. I feel that at the minute it's a bit too sort of cross-eyed. I think I don't think the lights are spaced wide enough. So what I want to experiment doing is reversing the feature so it runs up more along the sort of the outside shoulder line of the vehicle. Um with a sort of daylight running light that sort of cuts inboard and zigzags down, which I think would be more striking and would look a little bit more balanced than this this variant that we've got where it starts off inboard and then goes outboard. So that being the case, again, it's back to the principles of build another variant. Yeah, get something else up and running in CAD, project the curves on surfaces on that would allow us to, to build that, allow us to start to see that. Uh, and in industry, yeah, you'll spend quite a bit of time doing this type of work during the development phase. You know, you'll be looking at the options, you'll be comparing them, you'll be coming back to the things that you reviewed last week or even the week before, just to make sure that the design as it's maturing and evolving is as good as it possibly can be, that it all hangs together and is coherent. So in this case, it's the same principles that we've used before. It's using tubular offset to um, draw curves on surface and then trimming them back to create the regions of the design that we want to keep and want to trim back. Uh, applying fillets to those curves on the surface to give us little corners and tidy things so that things start to flow a little bit better. Uh, and just making sure everything's kind of lining up and doing what it want it to do before we trim it back and yeah, assign a different shader to reveal the feature that is going to be the, the daytime running light. And yeah, now that's working pretty well. I think finally as a designer I'll say I'm getting a bit more happy with that. And it's time to move on and look at other areas of the design. So, we're nearly there, we're into the, the home stretch. We're putting in just a few little details. Uh, parts that sort of imply sort of functional or technical details. So we're developing a couple of little aerofoils for the, the roof that would be little aerials. So we've got a sort of a shark's fin one that I've just put in there. And now I'm about to revolve uh, a little sort of a radio comms aerial. Again, it's just sort of little racing car details that you see that just, yeah, make it look a little bit more realistic. It'll cast shadows onto the top surface of that roof. You get a few reflections in there and it'll just make the thing come a little bit more to life, add a little bit of visual interest. Again, looking again at this split line, you want to just sort of tweak the position of where that falls, uh, reprojecting lines onto, we've got curves on surface in there in a position where we're happy with it. And then coming back to the tubular offset tool to create a bit of a, a groove surface in there. We'll, we'll treat that in a darker color so that it stands out. Uh, just gives us yeah the shape as we as we intend to see it. Make sure we're happy with the overall flow of that because again it helps link the front of the vehicle up to the back. Uh, gives it a bit more continuity on the flow. Uh, then we're into details. Yeah, you might want to brand the vehicle. Maybe you do that as a decal later on in V-Red, or maybe you want to cut it in as a little bit of geometry. So for now, I'm putting the Autodesk logo in. I've just steered that into position. I'm just projecting it on um, to give us just a hint of a front badge. Uh, and we'll be doing the same at the rear once that's trimmed. It always takes a little bit longer than you think. And then at the uh, at the rear of the vehicle, we'll do the same again. We'll take take the same logo. I'm kind of happy with the, the general scale of it. We'll flip that, we'll take it around to the rear. And again, we'll just put a, a flat surface in for, for the logo, we'll give that a bit of color, and then maybe just sort of draft some surfaces through. Uh, I think I use extrude tool actually on this one. Give it a darker color just to sort of put it in there. So you've got branding front and rear. We're nearly, nearly there. You know, the last thing that I can really sort of see to do in this model is to add a few more little detail fillets at the front, just to kind of soften off a few of those creased edges. And it's the same process as before. It's a case of getting caudal fillets in there, extending edges through, and then using freeform blend tool to just fill in the gaps and just make sure everything's joined up. Checking the tangency, making sure the CVs are joined up and they flow through. Yada, yada, yada. You get the idea. Yeah, this is the process we go through when we sketch modeling. And this will take us through to final data uh, for visualization. And to conclude the project, I took the data into VRED um, using the techniques that I've outlined in my previous tutorials. As a workflow, it's great because this is where the design really comes to light. You get to showcase what you've done. Um, and it's come together well as, as a project. I'm happy with the result. Um, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that 
interesting and informative and I hope that gives you uh, an insight into the basics of sketch modeling and how to develop concept models um, whether you do it professionally or in your spare time um, it's been nice to spend a bit of time going through this with you guys uh, I'll see you on the next one thanks bye